Today we're going to be looking at Gator Bits. We'll now view the layout area where we'll be using the Gator Base. That's right, one day for this project with just three people. Why and where can we use Gator Base? Well, why? Save time and money. It's an economical solution. Gain speed of installation. Reduce excavation by half. It's a better margin. One Gator Base panel replaces five inches of excavation. Where? Small or limited access, easy to carry up and down stairs, and tight working spaces. This is the ideal product design for all scenarios. Around pools, patios, landing areas, stairways, balconies, pathways, sidewalks, and even around sheds. First, let's establish the final area of our project and final paver level by installing string and using either a laser or string level to determine the final grade. We have on the screen behind me the schematic of the final excavation. In red, the existing slope and final excavated area. In black, the geotextile, three quarter inches of bedding sand, the gator base, the pavers, sweeping, compacting, and blowing the Gator Max polymeric sand. And finally, a minimum one degree slope. Step one will be the excavation of the new gator base area. We'll also extend our excavation area by a foot where gator rock bond will be laid. We'll now start trimming and excavating the area. Prior to excavating, check with the local utility service to ensure digging does not damage underground pipes or wires. The excavation should be done with the help of a shovel since we have a maximum of 4 and 3 eighths inches or 113 millimeters of material to be removed or with the help of a small excavator that will pass through the doorway of a gate. Since we're using an 80 millimeter paver, or a 3 and an eighth inch paver, the total excavation when using the gator base will only be 4 and 3 eighths inches. Traditionally, we would have used 9 and 1 eighth inches. That's a savings. Step two, level and compact the base. When excavation is completed, use a rake or shovel to level the excavated area. Ensure there's at least a one degree slope away from any structure, such as the house, and to your drainage area. The remaining loose native soil should be compacted using a plate compactor or a hand tamper. With the help of a pipe rolling on the compacted ground, Ensure that the area is as smooth as possible to get rid of any high or low spots within plus or minus 3 eighths of an inch. Step three, let's add the geofabric and the bedding sand. It's now time to lay the geotextile and cover the complete excavated area. The goal of the geotextile is to eliminate the contamination of the sand or crushed stone with the native soil. Reset and level your strings to the final height of the paved surface. Doing so, ensure having at least one degree slope and that the flow of water will be restricted from any structures. To obtain the perfect three quarter inch bedding course, use two three quarter inch pipes with an equal distance of four to six feet and fill in the surrounding area. With the help of a straight board, Level screed the sand using the pipes to your final level. When removing the pipes, fill in the empty gap. It's now time to compact the sand, and by doing so, our three quarter inches 
will now represent one half inch of compacted ground. The area should be smooth as possible with 3 8 inch variance. Step four, now we're ready for the gator base. The 90 degree has been established with the corner of the patio. Ensure to install the gator base on the extended excavation. As mentioned prior, the total excavation should be 12 inches wider than the finished product, or at least six inches on either side. Start laying the gator base units into a staggered pattern and ensure the locking of the tongue and groove system. This will help stabilize the panels when you lay the pavers or slabs. Each gator base panel measures two feet by three feet, or 61 millimeters by 91 millimeters, and covers six square feet, or 0.56 square meters. Trim any curves or angles along the edges using a utility knife. Step five, we'll now install the pavers or slabs and the gator edge. Lay the pavers or slabs directly on the gator base in the selected pattern. Use a rubber mallet to adjust the pavers or slabs. As not to damage the gator base, it is recommended to create a path with the help of pieces of plywood. Some cuts could be needed for the pavers and it's recommended to wear mask, glasses, and earmuffs for protection. Make sure the gator base is six inches or 15 centimeters wider than the paved surface. And when gator edge is to be installed, we'll have plus or minus four inches of gator base exceeding. A nail will be placed every second hole to maximize the lateral support of the gator edge. The twist and lock system of the gator edge will ensure continuity to the edge and reinforce the complete system. Step six, sweeping, compacting, and blowing the Gator Max polymeric sand. When sweeping the Gator Max with the hard bristle broom, spread over all small areas before moving on to the next. Ensure to fill the joints. Always ensure all paved surfaces are dry before emptying the bags of sand. It's now time to compact the sand using a plate compactor or a hand tamper. Do not use a plate compactor on the slabs. Repeat the filling and compacting of the paver joints. Broom the excess sand with a soft bristle broom and make sure the sand is 1 8 inch lower than the chamfer or top edge of the pavers. Finally, using a blower, always wear a mask. Blow off all residue lying on the paved surface. These two actions of sweeping and blowing will help eliminate any hazing that may occur and avoid callbacks. Step seven, the watering process. Set your sprayer on mist and at a height of four feet, spray the paved surface for three to four minutes, no longer. In the case of a hot summer day, avoid doing large surfaces as they will dry faster. At a height of two to four feet, mist and rinse the paved surface for three to four minutes, no longer. Mist and rinse a third and last time simultaneously to help eliminate any unwanted residue left on the paved surface. Stop rinsing once there is an accumulation of water in the joints. Finally, use a blower to help remove any excess surface water lying between the joints and crevices of the paved surface. Again, this process will help to eliminate any potential hazing. A few options are offered to you to do the final touch surrounding your new patio. Grass or sod, gator rock bond, gator mulch bond, or maybe all. This is the result of a job well done. And remember, do it once, do it right, 
save time and money, avoid callbacks, and get referrals. For more information, you can reach us at AllianceGator.com or for more videos, go to the Alliance Gator YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.